and welcome to the second edition of Manufacturing Today's Virtual Roundtable on ensuring business continuity through workforce management strategies. Technology is best when it works for people. With major disruptions happening in multiple industries, no company is too big to have a rug, have the rug pulled from under it. It's no longer about the bigger big eating the small, but it is about fast eating the slow. We have witnessed several technological advancements in businesses in the past couple of months. Without taking much any further floor space, allow me to introduce you to the panel, uh, you to our panel, who will be discussing on leveraging technology to empower workforce. Today we have with us Ashok Malhotra. He is a BTEC from Technological Institute of Textiles and MFC from Punjab University, Chandigarh, having experience of around 30 years in manufacturing of man-made fibers. Worked with organizations in India like Reliance and remained outside India for nine years in senior management position. He is currently heading SRF Limited Chennai as a site head and as a vice president. Dr. Devrajan, he is a pioneer and he is working with TBS Group for the past 35 years and is currently heading uh, production engineering and new technology as well as lead new product development. He has worked in setting up facilities of press shop welding shop, painting plants, heat treatment plants, machining of steel and aluminum engine parts, SMT lines, lead, uh, and lead, lead many projects in TBS uh, motor company. Mr. Vikas Thakur, he has around 30 years of experience in the field of HR and IR. He has been a part of two esteemed organizations in his illustrator career before Spark Menda, that is Tata Group and Cummins Group. Prior to this, uh, prior to his career in the corporate, he was a commissioned officer in the Indian Army. He was a captain till 1991 for a period of six years. He joined Spark Menda Group as the group CHRO in Feb 2020 and is currently based out of the group, uh, group uh, corporate office in Gurgaon. Next, please. Mr. Devashish Bhattacharji. He has around 30 years of experience with a demonstrated history of contribution to the precious metal industry, skilled in budgeting, operating management, team building, leadership, sustaining and sustaining changes. Strong engineering professional with a BE in metallurgy from Javed Pool University. Uh, Mr. Anuragam Vatsa, he is a qualified BE mechanical engineer from Pune University, University with a postgraduate diploma in export management and master's diploma in business administration. He has peer-edited the RSB Pant Nagar team in achieving the coveted world-class Deming Prey Prize in 2014 for the business excellence and quality. He is leading the team towards creating the TPM culture and its practices in the shop floor, targeting, uh, targeting and achieving the TPM award. Mr. Sumit Joshi, he is a country manager for UKG India. Sumit is responsible for the vision and execution of UPG's long-term strategy and growth in the Indian workforce management market. Sumit joined UKG in 2007 as a solution consulting and business development manager and is the third employee working in India before bringing his business development ex expertise to his role as the head of marketing. Thank you. And we have our moderator, Mr. Anand. He needs no introduction for the industry. He, he is a well-known personality when it comes to consulting. He's from the Frost and Sublime. Anand, over to you. Thank you. Yep. Uh, thank you, Sujata, and good afternoon to the esteemed panel members. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's such afternoon. a pleasure to have uh, such a wide variant of uh, experts on this uh, panel, and I'm delighted uh, to be sharing the dice uh, with all of you. So to set the context of what's going to be a very interesting session today is that um, I'm going to share with you a short deck that I've put together that kind of captures the idea that my team and Frost and Sullivan uh, strongly believes. So this is about leveraging technology to empower workforce uh, management. To, to start off with, uh, we are, of course, uh, living in a world that is disrupting, that's collapsing traditional business models. But the good thing is so we are also seeing a lot of transformation in businesses around all of us. So that makes it really interesting. And uh, in the manufacturing space, of course, we do know that a lot of trends are shaping up uh, both the industry as well as the economy and the workforce uh, thereby. So that said, uh, if we divide our conversations related to the key shifts that are happening in the manufacturing space, 
uh, we could put it as pre-COVID, which is mainly globalization and post-COVID, which is uh, looking up at uh, a lot of localization uh, as we call it. So we used to see that China used to be a big influential country that supports uh, the global supply chain for, for many decades, at least in the last decade or so. And we also saw the structure of just-in-time and minimized stock strategies that were prevalent for most part uh, during the past uh, the pre-COVID uh, times. Post-COVID, of course, we are seeing the build where you sell model with a lot of uh, industries. And we are also looking up at uh, localized supply chain and delivery footprint and radical improvement in overall efficiency, considering how you augment your workforce, how you augment technology for newer products and developments and how you take that forward. So if you look up at some of the novel technologies and themes uh, that are actually shaping up uh, the manufacturing space, the key trends are all related to what you see here, whether it is uh, IIoT based solutions, a lot of uh, theme is going related to sustainability, additive manufacturing, soft robotics, autonomous robots. Like for example, these are pre-programmed uh, robots that uh, handle uh, a lot of tasks, including transportation of material across the warehouse autonomously. So we are looking up at uh, leveraging advanced sensing technologies that tracks the development of these uh, vehicles. Uh, another important factor that is uh, core to this particular theme is related to a digital manufacturing. You see, this is a scenario where we are looking up at uh, remote monitoring and controlling of plant and equipment operations through the execution of real-time solutions powered by modeling solutions, sensors, analytical tools, IoT, cloud monitoring, and artificial intelligence. So a lot of development around the world is happening within the field of uh, manufacturing technologies. So that actually takes us uh, to the types of key themes as, as a research uh, organization, as an, as an organization that does a lot of work with uh, many of the companies like yourselves, the key themes that we have identified all through the year that experts are constantly addressing the challenges around are related to continuous monitoring, integrity of data that's available, how you could scale the operation, what's the transparency, and if we are looking up at an IIoT enabled world, how is connectivity? Uh, personalized knowledge, of course, health, wellness, well being also being a very crucial factor. But also importantly, circularity in terms of reduce, recycle, reuse, about how materials can be leveraged and uh, used. So these are the key themes under which we see a lot of decision making is uh, getting understood, is getting addressed, and challenges are being tackled, leveraging a lot of technologies. That said, I also want to tell you that technology is not restricted to one particular domain that we normally associate us with, but we are looking up at technology development that happens across different areas. And within Frost and Sullivan, we believe that 90% of the global technology development happens across these nine core uh, technology clusters. Of interest to you, of course, will be ones related to mainly that's happening in the information communication technology space or in the advanced manufacturing space and on the component level, of course, sensors and uh, microelectronics. Two things that uh, we promote as a result of this is that if you are invested in these technologies, our recommendation is to have you all invested in it. Two, is that there is a potential probability of convergence between these technologies that enable a serendipitous solution that was otherwise not thought about. So that's where we believe that these technologies have a lot to offer, have a lot to play. And that's where we feel experts like you are looking up at uh, solutions associated with this. So if you look up at, for example, next generation intelligent manufacturing, what is it? Intelligent manufacturing is basically we are looking up at the convergence between operations technology, information technology, and engineering technology. We are looking at convergence as an inevitable solution in the manufacturing world. 
Or if you look up at, for example, bipedal robots, so we, a lot of WhatsApp gets shared about these two-legged robot that uh, does all kinds of activities. A lot of development we feel is going to get into this particular area that's going to prevent uh, companies from actually using human forces in many of these uh, scenarios. Robotic grippers, another uh, interesting area, which form the end of the arm tooling component, which are designed to be attached to industrial robotic uh, arms. And this kind of allows uh, the robot to actually do a lot of applications that has material handling, picking, packing, machining. And these can be programmed to perform different tasks and also can be used at different speeds and force of flexibility. So you see that there is a lot of development that are associated with all of this that's happening. And that's going to be the key theme of what we are leveraging within the technology space. Now, in terms of uh, leveraging technology to empower workforce, we have seen that COVID has uh, tremendously impacted all the companies and has also brought up a lot of novel solutions that companies are adopting. One important thing that we continue to hear from experts like yourselves is uh, on upskilling existing teams and simultaneously building human capital with the right digital competence that is becoming very, very critical factor. So if we bucket ourselves into what are the top three challenges that we have observed in the manufacturing sector is what you see there in terms of unavailability of skilled professionals, high replacement cost of labor, supply chain disruptions. And if we look up at its impact in the focus areas across or during the pandemic has been in terms of labor management and training of high-skilled workforce, localizing manufacturing networks and adopting to new technologies and uh, skills for developing a sustained management strategy during these crises. So today uh, we are going to set this particular theme and discuss about managing risks, looking up at digital capabilities and remote data capture solutions, talk about digital adoption for business continuity and increase our organization's ability to anticipate and look up at competitive changes that we are witnessing at the moment. So I will be discussing this with uh, the leading panel out here. So thank you all for your time. Before uh, we begin our uh, panel discussion, may I request Sumit to introduce his side? Sure, go ahead, Sumit. Thank you, Anand, for uh, setting that perspective. And thank you, Sujata, for, uh, for inviting uh, me. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Manufacturing Today for giving us this opportunity to be out here engaging with all of you. Uh, I wanted to take a couple of minutes uh, here uh, just to introduce uh, this, uh, this name that you're seeing on your screens that Sujata put up, which is UKG, right? So, so, uh, so at UKG, our, our tagline is, in fact, our purpose is people. We are a 45-year-old organization uh, who has focused uh, over the decades purely uh, managing people, uh, helping organizations like yours managing people on the ground. It's not about the, the typical life cycle of an employee like recruitment, talent management, which is one side of an employee life cycle. But when, when it comes to manufacturing, and, and Anand talked of some amazing technologies that are coming in today, whether it is sensors, instrumentation, or, or uh, artificial intelligence, and so on and so forth. With all those technologies that are coming in, a lot of manufacturers even today still struggle uh, around getting the right visibility on their workforce on the ground to be able to derive the right productivity. Having the, if you have the right skills, having the right visibility, real-time visibility on that skill so that you can deploy that person rightfully, so that you can get the best out of that team or that set of people, is always a challenge for most manufacturers. And UKG, UKG's sole purpose is about building solutions and, and helping organizations like yours, manufacturers especially, uh, providing, uh, providing those solutions that can help you take away this headache so that you can focus on more value-added technologies like the ones that uh, Anand is mentioning, moving towards Industry 4.0. So, uh, so, so having the right set of people, having the right visibility, driving the right kind of compliance, the right kind of productivity, those are critical parameters that I think all of you as leaders are constantly thinking about. And that's an area that we uh, work with many organizations like, uh, like yourself to try and try and make a difference to them so that, so that they, can, uh, they can deliver their output and their, uh, 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 run their operations more effectively. So that's what UKG is all about. Uh, I, 
I just wanted to give you a sense of who UKG uh, is. And I, I come in from the digital world. I come in from the IT world. I, I'm not a manufacturer here. Uh, so on in this panel, uh, where where I, I where I can come in, I'll try and bring in a bit of a digital experience of mine in terms of what we have probably done with the, some of the other uh, customers across the world. Uh, so that's where I will probably add value. But more importantly, I, I look forward to hearing from this leadership, uh, uh, amazing leadership panel that we have here in terms of your experiences and uh, challenges. So thank you so much and back to Anand. Thank you, uh, Sumit, and that was good to kind of understand about the right type of skills and the visibility that organizations require. So I'm just going to quickly go with our panel. And again, thank you all for joining this particular session. So my first uh, question would be to Mr. Ashok Malhotra, who's the plant head uh, at SRF uh, Limited. Uh, Mr. Ashok, uh, digital manufacturing technologies have gained immense momentum since the global pandemic. And uh, how have you seen the landscape change at uh, the factory floor, floor levels? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Aran. I'll uh, just uh, show a scene. I'll just tell you the scene which used to be pre-pandemic and now on my shop floor, just to tell that that will uh, tell where the digitization has taken place in our factory. Uh, we, before pandemic, what used to be do normal, there is around 750 workforce, they will come to the factory, there will be a shift in charge who will be distributing the job, they will go into their machine, then as per the job allocation, they will be doing the job, and then uh, at the end of the shift, another shift to come, relieving will happen and they will start. That was a normal business going on. What happened in pandemic, the thing is, we were not having that liberty of wasting a single minute because the manpower was always a concern that if I need 750, there will be 600 on the floor. Now the priorities are required and I don't have that liberty. Okay, one, one person will allocate the job, then they will go and finish that job and they will do at, at their own pace, which was a normal world. So what we think of at that time, our team came with an idea. Let's take an uh, analogy from the airport. Airport, there are so many flights, so many passengers, but nobody's telling you where to go. But everybody's doing his job. Each passenger is reaching to the designation. Why don't we put the same thing in our shop floor where the, each workman can know his destination and do the job himself without being allocating anything? He will come, he will do the job, and he knows what is to be done, and uh, we will not guide him at all. So let's get away with this allocation business at all. So what we did, we have made a visual factory, which is in terms of uh, display on the screens, like flight arrivals, our uh, activities when the workman is required on particular machine. And then only one thing we key that uh, during the shift start, we put the number of persons who came so that the activities is getting distributed to the same number of people. Now the person comes, they see at the screen, and they allocate themselves to a certain activity, do then the other person allocate and there are multiple screens. They are doing the job as and they enter to the screen, I have done it. By doing that, our productivity with the 650 people were more than what we were getting pre-COVID with 750 people. So then uh, that uncertainty has gone and the priorities also was not set up by a shift in charge who was not having that visibility. Now the workman himself knows the number one, two, three is coming. And then we made all these things, the flashing lights, you go there, and then uh, this is delayed by this much. What is your efficiency? All kind of thing has happened. And But literally, now we are like working on an airport where all the things happen without any announcement. Is a silent airport, is a silent department. Everything is happening. And it is given us an immense uh, productivity increase as well as the satisfaction to the workmen because they work. Uh, they are giving, getting more work without having any struggle with the shift in charge. I want to do this work. Today, I don't feel to do this. They are free. You go to this work, you do that. Between themselves, they are deciding. We are no, no more uh, guiding them. You do that. And all work is being done. So that's what we achieved after this pandemic. This is something different. <laughs> really radically different where you adopted the airport analogy to kind of get your forces to decide uh, themselves about what they have to do based on the strength. So this is a good example. I think it's quite unique. Uh, many of us have not heard about it. Thanks, uh, Mr. Ashok, Thank for you. this. Uh, let me just draw the attention of Mr. Devrajan, Dr. Devrajan uh, from TVS. So, so of course, uh, you know that there has been a shortage of skilled uh, workforce. 
And uh, many companies, of course, do have partnerships with uh, vendors uh, to accordingly look up at manpower. So what has uh, your organization done to address this? And what are some of the novel uh, developments like um, what Mr. Ashok Malhotra just explained that you have done for real-time monitoring of your own workforce, yeah. Dr. Devraj? Yeah, thank you. I think that's a very good question. Um, see, there's always been uh, non-availability of the right skill, uh, which can cause uh, serious disruption in business. Uh, in our type of business on two-wheeler and three-wheeler, the volume is very high. Volume and varieties are very high. Our tag time or the time for each one vehicle to come out is something like 24 to 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds when vehicle rolls out from the factory. And the factory does have all varieties of uh, facilities, whether welding or press or um, machining assembly areas. So people are our strength along with the process improvement. Though we have a lot of automation in our cases, definitely people are our strength. There's been a change in terms of uh, simple automation and, and to uh, improved and uh, uh, robots and other areas which are implemented inside a factory. I'll come specifically to the point of uh, how are we skilling up people? Because what we try to do in many areas, uh, we try to uh, encourage training of the person in the assembly line, for example, one in this assembly station, one up and one down. He should be fully aware of the entire assembly sequence and he should be able to take it if the other person is not coming. Similarly, in some areas of related welding shop and the press shop, we try to uh, rotate our team members and train those members so that they can take care of it. We have extended the same thing to our vendors. We have a training center called IQL, uh, Institute of Quality Leadership, where we train all the uh, workmen and the engineering staff onto the manufacturing end. We strongly believe that the process, good process only can give you results. It cannot be just putting one person there, the output will come. It has to be trained because the consistency of product is going to be very, very critical. We have adopted many of the digital areas of training, understanding, and uh, we have AR, we have technique of training. Suppose we have a, a welding area, we have trained our operators, including the supplier and uh, operators, on to using AR and VR on welding areas. You uh, certify him that he's a good welder before we move him into the shop floor. So it is a combination of digital, it's a combination of the work practices which is involved. At the same time, uh, it's very important to know that uh, productivity doesn't come only by the people. It has to be good fixtures, good tooling, we call it 6, 6M conditions. Men method, material, manpower, um, material handling, measurement system. We are trying to concentrate on every process and how to make the work easy for the operator. So for us, the end customer is a customer, either vehicle who buy the vehicle. At the same time, operator also is a customer. So how to make his work easier? How to make his activity very simple? So we are trying to combine many of the things. We have used digital system. We have used a man-made system in our own Poke Oke area, automation, ergonomic improvement. So it's, it's very, but three areas where we are given very, very important after pandemic. One is on safety, extremely important that it is on safety. Second is how to work remotely because the, the supervisor may be work from home. So we are able to have a lot of digital displays in our factory so that we can in, instruct the, the team members in case of problem and how to manage the risk of especially resource planning and emergency. Uh, we are trying to man, uh, work out the temperature of every person, where he's supposed to work. The main thing after pandemic, according to me, in this skill is we are trying to get the trust of the employees. The people are feeling ownership and they have been wanted. And, and the main area for focus has been multi-skilling. So in short, whether we are using external resources, we are not using external resources, but we are training our uh, vendors also. We are trying to make the process improvement in every area. We are trying to make even the remote area of maintenance using ARVR in a huge area of skill development and try to standardize many of these areas. And uh, so what we try to do is we strongly believe in PBS. The process will give you results. So we are working on all the elemental process. And we are not going for very high funder technology, very simple, make the work easier, make the customer happy, make the customer, internal customer happy. At the same time, skill him, skill majority of our areas 
build more of poke okay in our uh, processes and ensure that the process talks to you, machine talks to you. At the same time, we are able to scale the person. I think this is the main area we have taken. So it's a combination of getting the people from outside, but trained people, having our own training method methodology into our uh, area, bring the digital along with the standardized methodology and see that the things are going on. So we are using AR, VR, robotics, you name all the technology we have, but we're combined into how it is helping the person. It's not technology for technology's sake. How we can help the common person in the shop floor and he has to feel fully empowered that I'm learning new. I tell you the amount of satisfaction the people get when they are involved in that area of work in any skill is tremendous. It's tremendous. People wouldn't have done their engineering, but they know what sensor they are using, what type of uh, feeling they're getting to use it. And if you empower them, train them, ensure that this is for your productivity, this is for your economics, and you involve them. So I, my, my strong feeling is how we are able to involve them from the beginning. That gives a huge fillip. And technology works only when there is involvement of people, according to me. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Devarajan. That was also very profound uh, of what you say. And you also touched a very vital chord amongst all the humans, which is the emotion, right? By basically taking care of their safety, allowing them to work remotely, and then leveraging whatever technology that they should. Uh, and I'll tell you, the amount of suggestion schemes, they come up. The suggestion scheme can come up. We are getting something like 78 suggestions per employee per year, almost three suggestions per week. Like that, huge amount of suggestions we get. And they're involved, empowered into their area. So I think it's an important thing for us. Yeah, I'll come yeah, back later for other points. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. You need a, a data-driven decision-making. That yes. was one of the themes that I spoke at the yeah. address yeah. manufacturing association. Yes, 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 yes. But uh, so you might need a lot of artificial intelligence if you're getting that kind of ideas from yeah. Yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. So congratulations to you and uh, everybody at TVS for uh, coming up with such a novel solution. Thanks a lot. Uh, so that takes me to Mr. Vikas uh, Thapa from Spark Minda. Uh, thank you, sir. Again, uh, there is a constant risk uh, of several employees of a unit or shift being absent, which, uh, which obviously leads to a lot of productivity loss. Uh, how have you managed to tackle such an, uh, an issue within your organization? Thank you, Mr. Anand. Okay, that's a very relevant question. Okay, and it touches all of us. Okay, and... Uh... Yeah. When you talk about uh, absenteeism or the people not available, it depends what time, when, okay, especially and which region, okay, and it varies, okay, because if you look at my organization, okay, it's a very labor intensive manufacturing process, 32 plants and around 15,000 people. And I see a typical symptoms in different regions at different part of the year, okay, some regions. After getting the salary, next two days, people will be off. I don't know, they are drunk or somewhere. I don't know what happens, okay. So that is one symptom I have seen. Okay, second symptom I have seen somewhere, if even one political party calls for a bug, everybody will be at home, irrespective of which political affiliation they have. Okay, and third party will be, they will be looking for some excuse. Okay, any type of religion, they'll be at home. So I think so. Uh, it's, it's the role what HR has to play. I think more of a really, if you look at the sole purpose of HR existence in the business is to enabling business to achieve their goals. And if the, we partner them well, and the biggest disconnect I see in HR is we try to think as a very isolated function. I think so we are part of the value chain where we are going to set up internal customers to support. Okay, so that, that is the way, and I think to be to come down to high, I, how I look into it. Uh, some using some technology, help of technology also, uh, you will not believe. I, I do a predictive analysis of likelihood of absenteeism in the coming days and week. Mm -hmm. And if I plot them in one year, I see a very similar trend year on year. Okay, I know if it is a Pongal, my Chennai team, 25% will be off. Okay, so. Holy, my whole Noida plants will be off because everybody will be off, okay. So how we can be slightly proactive and how we can look at the analysis of the last two years and how we can be ahead of the game and plan that and work very closely with the production planning in terms of creating that inventory or really working with 
some other set of workforce so that the business is not disrupted okay so that is one solution uh, i have looked into second is each individuals i have mapped in my hri as human resource system okay in terms of their skill level and having some contingency plans okay if this doesn't work these people can this one so this customer is going to be very critical okay we need to support this so 20% of time my hr leaders are spending time with production planning people rather than production planning people coming and telling okay tomorrow we need so many people up front looking into the customer and we punch in and we are very clear tomorrow and next week what will be our requirement of manpower so it's more of a proactive rather than just waiting from production people i need so many people okay because our business is more like a it's very cyclical in nature and it's like agriculture okay it's up down up down and if i have to really speak on behalf of most of the automobile industries the way the trend is trending uh that is true and sometimes i think so i have to play the old theory of carrot and stick okay up front proactive if you are absent this is what you are going to do and on the other side okay i tell you uh, a few weeks back we had pongal right in the in chennai i had to come out with the scheme three weeks ahead of pongal okay if you are present on this thing so we are going to give you a weekly so much a bonus okay and a special uh, a, a special event special thing okay organizing making some fun the whole concept is if people don't miss out this thing at home they will get a very similar experience at the workplace okay that's the way i look into it but suddenly technology plays a key role because my 100% of the 15000 people are on touchless system in terms of attendance workplace okay and they getting configured into which line require how many people absenteeism trend creating buffer and working on that that's the way at least my team works mr anand yeah thanks a lot uh, mr vikas so you've uh, pretty much uh, kind of said that this is all a people driven so hr should play a very important role and then of course you are also build a pattern in terms of predicting how your workforce is actually going to be working for on different occasions and then of course uh, giving them the gifts that they need to get if they are more productive the carrot and stick approach so taking this of course i know sumit mentioned earlier uh, when he started that uh, that's the headache that they would like to kind of address quite a bit sumit uh, you have something to chip in here on what uh, mr vikas just said uh, sure anand uh, i think there's some amazing insights from all the three uh, panelists in terms of what they're doing how and and i think goes without saying you might do all that you can but i think people are at the core of uh, delivering uh, what there is so so i think one thing that really resonated uh, with what we do with what mr thapa uh, vikas thapa mentioned was in in a lot of organizations where the, the there isn't enough workforce visibility we've seen hr and operations tend to be at times at loggerheads uh, because hr has a piece of information that operations does not have and operations has information that hr does not have but really as mr thapa mentioned uh, hr is an enabler to operations to be able to provide the right skill right set of people right visibility and be able to take them forward to deliver the business goal so 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 i, I think where, where digital intervention helps significantly is providing the same information and the same view across the board across these two stakeholders otherwise in a lot of organizations where things are not digitally enabled you tend to have very different versions of truth across different stakeholders and that creates uh, lack of visibility lack of proper outcomes uh, mr vikas thapa mentioned already the amount of uh, digital interventions that he already has i was I, I impressed to hear some of the predictive analytics that he's already doing so so with that kind of information that he has at hand he he can he can be as uh, 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 he, he he can i'm pretty sure he can engage so well with his manufacturing head who is his customer to deliver the right outcomes in terms of what's available and what is not so so i think from a digital standpoint where the real value is uh, is is uh, from a workforce management perspective is getting operations and hr together and they they ending ending ending, ending up working as one team rather than uh, two two teams that are probably at loggerheads with each other that's that's one of the areas we definitely enable a lot thank you <laughs> thank you sumit uh, all right uh, so that's good uh, so if you can enable between two two varying departments that's always uh, good for any organizations because that, that, that kind of 
stems any kind of discord that may be there within the sets of professionals that manage each of these groups. Thank you, uh, uh, Sumit. So now uh, let me draw the attention of Mr. Debashish Bhattacharji. So Mr. Debashish, in your experience, how should uh, manufacturers plan to tackle the digital challenges to track uh, their employees' digital progress? And uh, what do you think are the measures that uh, they will have to take for such a scenario? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I hope I'm audible. I represent uh, an industry where uh, which is related to metal uh, refining. It starts with the mining sector. Uh, and after the primary refining at the mining sector, it goes to for the secondary refining and its value addition. Uh, and um, specifically speaking, uh, it's a precious metal industry. For uh, the sake of information, uh, I would like to inform everybody that uh, India is the biggest consumer after China of uh, precious metal, namely gold and silver. Unfortunately, uh, this sector is uh, a to mostly an unorganized sector. Uh, and there are hardly a few companies uh, who have uh, really looked on it to get it in a formal way, to get it more organized like that. The trend has started because the demand is there. Uh, now coming to the main challenges uh, that we have faced in this industry is number one, um, this industry, because it is mining, because it is refining, because it is casting, it is full of physical labor and uh, it is full of hazards. When I take of hazards, I mean hazards uh, related to melting, uh, hazards related to chemicals, and the human being, the ambience, the compliances uh, are all very, very important and needs to be duly mitigated and respected to get the end results uh, and run this industry in a very sustained manner. Now the challenge is as uh, if I can just before jumping on to the how to track uh, tackle the uh, employees digital progress, I think I have uh, by far, I could bifurcate the challenges into mainly skills and fear. Uh, there is a uh, skill gap, especially in sectors uh, where uh, I represent between uh, what is actually digitalization. People are shop floor people, but uh, they want to keep pace. The manufacturing industry wants to keep up pace with the digital, but the skill is not there. The people are not accustomed uh, to be more digital friendly. So, and also there is a fear of technology because people fear this kind of people, the operators um, that, technology, if it comes, my job will get replaced. What will I do? So uh, nobody wants to lose his or her position in favor of the technology. This feeling is still there very much. Second, the adoption of new technologies. Uh, the manufacturing industry in still in India, I think most of the industries have their set pattern. And uh, it is very difficult uh, for them to come to oh, when it comes to adopt any change because it's a risk. Whenever you will go for changes, you have to embrace uh, these changes. And especially when you go for digital changes, which is uh, uh, accompanying it, there is a chance uh, that you will be having, uh, you will of course generate lots of data. That data we will be getting um, lo lots of exposures. The manufacturers have to hassle uh, between the manufacturing site located at various uh, places. As Mr. Thapa said, uh, that there are 32 locations in there are the suppliers, uh, the vendor management, uh, the logistics. So between these uh, stakeholders, there is lots of data needs to be uh, juggled, which increases the risk of cybersecurity. Some data has shown recently that the manufacturers' data are very prone to cyber um, uh, security because um, uh, it is too much uh, handling of data with uh, lots of exposure. And also there is lack of standardization. One, one stakeholder might be using it in one way, the other might be using in a different way. So when you are going to adopt a new technology, any manufacturer will uh, is in a, in a state of mind whether to go for it, whether not to go for it, because these are the risks that he has to tackle. Now, uh, this uh, digital transformation is a combination of many disruptive technologies. So whenever an organization goes, the, there is a change management practice which needs to be uh, done, which is actually needs lots of time and effort adds to resources and cost and the employees who are already there uh, there is a resistance 
uh, they want to maintain their status quo so changing that mentality is also uh, uh, a great uh, resistance to the change management practice and coming to innovation which is a part of the management uh, manufacturing practice hardly at least in india we see any interface between the industry and the research organization they all stand alone so there is hardly any incubation uh, there is hardly any uh, collaboration between the firms and the universities and the research center so the innovation in two sense are happening in stand alone ways so combining all this and going to the uh, digital transformation and implementing uh, in the manufacturing sector uh, is really a great challenge and where how to measure the digital progress of the employees the employees uh, we see now there are two types of employees one who has been in this traditional field for many years uh, they are senior pro they have experience they are not much digitally helpful they are not digitally educated they have some speculation and a new gen coming on who is actually digital pro they don't enjoy the physical walk too much they need to be nourished they need the smart technology so when we mingle them uh, we need to be have to be have a very cautious approach of how do you allow them to mingle and get this into a culture now the benchmarking against the best in the business is important so when you benchmark the operator or the person knows that what i am i am needed to do till now all this uh, many years we have seen that this uh, the, at the year end you just fill up a form and it is more subjective it is slowly giving away the kpis are more data driven they are displayed at the site they uh, at places kpis are filled on every day level and the data is available so the gentleman who is filling can see okay that is uh, actually uh, getting uh, measured you can see that in form of a graphic a graphical form this is what i have done this is how i am melted and then how do you capture the data so we need to provide an, uh, a platform there where all data needs to be uh, captured and it must be easy and friendly it must not be very complicated and the standard they need to be every the same there is no there is a, a data pool which can be accessed easily and the data can be um, easily uh, retrieved in case if there is an, an event of risk before the risk that we are talking of the, uh, from an incident to crisis that must be mitigated with the help of the data and that must be when you develop the platform it is important we take inputs from these guys who have been working there for long so the training on the artificial intelligence cloud computing big data internet of things which are still not friendly needs to be imparted so these people needs to be trained continuously and they need to be assured especially the senior pro that this is for your betterment we are taking care of you by following up with them so that is not fearful that i am going to get replaced and uh, very soon i think uh, i was reading a paper in by 2020 28 we will see interactive collaboration between employees using language software they won't be talking uh, how it's happened they use, will be using language software conversation interface dialect, uh, dialect transition uh, across the boundary so the awareness of the employees to a digital things the trainings and etc even at the manufacturing needs to be implemented uh, greatly they need to be made cautious of usage of internet the cyber security and they need to be firmly taken uh, in an integrated way everybody must where uh, mr thapa said rightly that the hr needs to play a pivotal role in aligning everybody together and the concept of we working will come uh, that it's not an individual it's a we working small flexible teams working with agility their continuous upskilling digital dirty um, um, uh, not only depending on experience get new machines which have smart interfaces which helps you uh, to identify how much melting has gone happen when to open that furnace not simply opening the furnace and seeing by your right. eyes so all these yes, things need to be taken care of no absolutely uh, mr debarsi so you kind of captured so many important uh, points out here one is of course uh, in terms of the industry by itself uh, not embraced to new technologies simply because it's uh, it's not one of those uh, sectors where you have pro processes it's kind of a little neglected one 
And two is uh, you spoke about some of the themes that I kind of captured earlier related to data integrity, scalability, transparency, the personalized knowledge uh, related to all of these areas. And that kind of causes a lot of mismatch between what you want, as well as to address uh, the important points in terms of allowing uh, the leadership team to actually learn, engage, get more uh, information about how to leverage each of these technologies to come out uh, with a solution. And that means integration of uh, the human resource capital uh, as a team with all of the industry workers. So that's, uh, that's pretty important and very good. And thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Depashish for actually offering us uh, so much of insights uh, for this. So I now uh, would like to kind of draw the attention of uh, Mr. Anurgam Vastsa to talk specifically about uh, the, given the, the economic uh, volatility, the technology disruption, the increased participation of uh, blue collar workers in the formal economy, and uh, how is it that the manufacturing sector is navigating these megatrends and planning its workforce management strategies? to drive better productivity. Yeah, good afternoon to all. And thank you, Anand. Uh, first of all, I would, in fact, my, already my colleagues have talked about and we all have experienced the pain of the COVID. So there has been an era pre and post COVID, which, which uh, sometimes some of people even say, some colleagues also say that it is not post, uh, it is not post COVID, it is yet, the COVID phase, because, because again, the numbers are increasing in certain areas, especially at Delhi and NCR and all. And myself is from Pantanagar, Rudrapur, so we are, we are very careful as far as Delhi regions are concerned. But that really, if, if the number starts at Delhi, then we know that very slowly and steadily it is going to come to Rudrapur. So we really need to think of that. Maybe I'm taking a minute for this, that we all as a leader sitting here, we need to still be very careful on that aspect. Now, as far as leveraging is concerned, and obviously that's why the economy is concerned, we have seen the economy, the situation, which for three years there has been a, we have really been very badly affected somehow Last year, the year which we close, it is comparatively, we could feel that it is coming back on the track. But with this, all this, yes, we have learned a lot. I always say there are two sides to every coin. And the one side was that, yes, we went through a very painful and none of us in Akira, in fact, in all of our country, none of us can say that uh, any family directly or indirectly or uh, just immediate or extended family, we all have been affected by COVID. So we need to be very careful. Now, as far as leveraging is concerned, I, in, in a very simple, I, I was remembering because when I, we were talking that, uh, that we need to work on this and talk on this, I was thinking, yeah, what is that leverage? So I just remembered, I still remember what I, during my college days, that being a mechanical engineer, they say exertion force, which is given by some means of a liver or something like that. Then I was thinking that, okay, if it is that, then what is the real force which we need, which at least I experience during my working life in an industry which I'm enjoying since last maybe 27, 28 years. And I think that force, you all will agree that force is motivational force. That force is motivational force. And again, we, we all say to each other that what is motivation? We all are going to define motivation in our own way. And we all would be correct. It is not that we all will not be correct. Somebody would be wrong or something. No, we all would be correct. But then again, I would like to bring my basic. I, I'm a man who believes in basics. I'm telling you, I always believe in basics. So if I bring my management uh, knowledge, which I gained it during my student life, I still remember the definition of a motivation that is spark of need. If you have, if you have very clearly defined what is this need and that spark is ignited, everybody will be motivated. 
when we say that we have to motivate motivate means what what have we to do because anand gave me a very different question to me about the blue collar job and all but let me tell you rsb i am working in rsb right from my career uh, when i joined as a gt so last 25 27 years i'm working in this company and we believe in motivation we believe in empowerment if you we were talking about uh, even mr thapa said that the hr there is a disconnect i i take it that way i always tell my hr that and i tell my operation people and even when i was uh, working as a hardcore manufacturing man hardcore before planted and all i always said my team the members who are present on the shop floor they are my team they are mighty and i used to say hr when i tell you that you need to intervene then only you intervene otherwise i know how to handle my baby because when i demand them i have to listen to their pains also so that's a very important principle which i always follow i always say that hr you be in a friendly relationship with them you manage the government organizations from the external bodies in house is my baby so i feel is that with blue collar job people there are two things very important one is you need to motivate them if you define their work if you define their goal and you empower them and you appreciate them they are going to really give do wonders and i don't know how many of you will agree to me and this is a very common uh, concept and fear which we all have whole every industry has what mr devashish bhattacharjee sahab said that once one we will listen about an automation we think our job is going to go and i always assure my boys that that is not going to take your job that is going to help you in your job that is going to help you in your productivity in your quality because digitization the word the way it is moving on it is very much required because if you remember we all i think so we we all are almost of the same age group we all have done our drawing on mechanical engineering or any engineering we have done on drafters and all but if you see nowadays boys they they don't know what drafter is they are totally on computers and software yeah yeah but but still and, and there was a time when we were used to do work on conventional lathe lathe but the boys now passing out from engineering they, they don't know how to operate a lathe they can do some programming they can press certain buttons and okay cnc vmc we can run sir that is what but again i always say that was a basic knowledge which we gained which has moved on to technology upgradation through automation and similarly data is going to help us if you have any skill it is your you are not going to do the job now as far as uh, gig economy is concerned yes it is moving up anand it is really moving up but again i i don't know i the time will say because it has always it always has a good and a side and a bad effects also when you bring your team whether it is your own people or whether those are casual neighbors we as an rsv we treat them equally it is only it is on the difference is only of the uniform that's all nothing else the training need what we the training needs which are identified for the permanent neighbors and for the casual they remains the same so we give them input now post covid we understood one thing that you need to give them more training because they need to be very much trained enough because sometimes things days will come when the experts will not be on the shop floor so that is going to be very important so we ensure that we give them more training their skills are very much enhanced and the level of multi skilling what we believed we really need to move much ahead for the multi skilling because yes uh, one of our colleague was saying that there was a time 700 people were called but only 600 people were coming so we all faced that and that was a day when you call 700 people and you find 800 people standing please give me a job 
but there was a time when you call 700 you get 600 people so the multi skilling really plays a very vital role and if you bring digitization into this i'm telling you it is going to improve the quality it is improve the productivity your empowerment because once you empower an operator once he knows that yes i can say a good good part a good and a bad part bad why should my senior come and tell me or a quality person come and tell me that's a bad i will put the button off right away and then we will take a call so that is going to help us with this digitization but as a summary i can say that these boy needs to be motivated kept in a pool never feel that they are left aloof because even during the covid i personally i asked my hr and my self was very much clear that 24 by 7 you need any help you give me whatever to whatever best extent i can help you out guys i'll help you and this has anand i'll take another one minute and this has really helped me i would like to share a very small maybe it's a very small incidence but i think so it's a very big incidence you won't believe i just recently uh, one of my casual labors was found in some indisciplined activity so i we said a goodbye to him we mixed we explained him and we made him convince and we said goodbye you know but you know indian uh, market indian economy indian uh, politics areas everywhere your politician jumps in all uh, blah 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 so i was getting pressure from politicians hey, why did you keep him so i went and met those that politician and i made him explain that this is the reason sir and he has been blacklisted because say it's not question that they had yes produce one number less or he has rejected one number less but it was indiscipline and for indiscipline i'm sorry we are we cannot take it and now it is not in my hand because this boy has been blacklisted and the name has gone to the corporate so i'll have to take a special permission from the corporate i i don't have as a planted i don't have the authority but then i asked him i said he is a casual worker sir a very every one of you say there is a casual worker sir why is a casual working worker struggling hard to take same job in my in same company in my company only he can get a job anywhere as a casual worker so you ask him then again that uh, person called me after two he say nice sir he says he in your job he is straight different company but he is not able to adjust i said i i this gives me satisfaction that we are really taking care of the people sir but but with this i cannot bring one rotten into my plant and spoil the culture so we really need to take care of uh, all the employees and because if you go on uh, offloading for who are very skillful or freelancer it has an advantage but it does have disadvantage also maybe time will come since might change but as of now every job cannot be given to a freelancer was he will not have because the com a company is not only a building or it is not only a place where we produce it is a place where emotionally we are attached emotionally by human we are attached emotionally to the work we are attached emotionally to the product we are attached so once we are attached emotionally that really plays a role so this is what i think thank you very much uh, mr watsa that's uh, that's very good so you really hit a lot of emotional cards uh, out here and uh, the biggest factor that you think is is motivation is what is going to kind of uh, help people to contribute to the growth of uh, the business uh, but what you also very clearly said is that and one common theme uh, is that hr uh, has to play a very a critical role and the owners of the manager is to ensure that uh, their uh, employees or their co-workers are all uh, taken care and the responsibility of productivity and other things actually uh, mostly is in your hands uh, as a manager to ensure that uh, people are happy productive and very empathetic uh, and we are very empathetic to all of their uh, needs one thing we have seen right from the industrial revolution is that any technology change that has happened it has only given rise to more jobs it has not actually pulled jobs down for the last 100 years so we anticipate with all the digital technologies and other things like what uh, mr devrajan earlier said is that uh, 
safety is taken care of the employees. We give more empowerment to the employees to decide on what uh, needs to be done to sort out uh, their issues. So more and more technology actually enables a better workforce and accountability as well as responsibility to everyone. That's what uh, I would kind of quickly summarize on our first round of uh, our discussions. This takes me uh, to, the, to the next one. Uh, again, uh, uh, Mr. Ashok, uh, uh, quickly, you've covered uh, a couple of uh, other points uh, when we discussed about how you were able to kind of leverage a completely unknown model uh, like airport planning into your factory. Uh, I'm just going to kind of now ask you, how will data-driven manufacturing change the way manufacturers operate by in the next decade or so? Again, I'll uh, like to uh, give some examples then uh, come to the future because we are already entering into this uh, data analytics and IoT then using this data to our advantage, though it's getting into the pockets, not the fully digitalization of the manufacturing. Uh, one of the thing I'll tell you, we have used this data in uh, recently in our uh, absenteeism cases. We have gone other way around. Why a person is absent? So we made a 75 points on the person which is incorporating his behavior, his financial position, his medical condition, his family, his mode of transport, his distance from the factory, his uh, loan situations outside, and then uh, his uh, double earning, single earning, kind of dependency of the family members, chronic disease or no disease, whether he's covered enough by insurance. I have taken all these factors, and then we try to generate a regression model to see that uh, what kind of absenteeism and what kind of predictivity of the presence of this person is there. And we could get around 65% uh, R value in that R square value. That means I can tell with 65% confidence that this person is going to be coming today or not coming today, which we are taking festivals, also. all things were uh, met the 70. Then in that one, well, when we were doing this exercise, I'm just coming just a little bit off the topic, then I'll come uh, what we are talking. So we have felt that instead of employee connect, family connect seems to be more paying the job. So when we were collecting this data, we definitely gone to their families, our HR reached to their family to know their condition and all. So in that one, we could feel that family was taking factory as okay, is going and working. But once we started this exercise talking to them, they become as a one. So we, we change our concept from employee connect to the family connect, which has given me some advantage in the absenteeism. Now the thing is other part what you are talking about that in 2000 uh, times to come, how the machines are going to be. What I'll say that uh, man is because less using his brain as the time coming, machines are becoming a time. It's going other way around. Earlier we used to say, I learned more, I learned more, I learned more. Now that we are concentrating, machine should learn more, it should speak more, machine should tell where I am bad, where I am bad. So basically all kind of maintenance and all will not be man driven. Very soon I am feeling that gradually it's changing to the machine driven with sensors, with the indications, with alerts. Machine is telling I need your attention. Man is not seeing you are scheduled for a maintenance. Machine is telling I am scheduled for a maintenance. So like bearing temperatures are there, vibrations are there, going for condition-based monitoring. So we are immediately knowing, yes, now, now I need your attention. Now the second part, which is more interesting is, at present still man intelligence is there, how to attend that part which machine alert is there. But gradually we are shifting, there will be screen on the machine which will be telling what to do when this alert is there. And I think he will be pressing a button only and gradually the problem will get attended. Now like, now, person is just uh, taking, okay, he knows this bearing temperature is high, what I do, I change this, I change this, I change lubrication oil and then I think all this will go away. After that, the only we will left with, we have to press a button. Okay, bearing temperature high, press this button, this lubrication oil will change, this will get delubricated re and finally the machine will be into the better condition. So gradually machines are becoming more intelligent than men. That's what we are heading uh, towards uh, 30. And another thing, I am challenging the my process every day. Let us say I made a product today through the entire value chain. With data analytics, I know what kind of power consumption, what kind of chemical consumption I have used on that. Same product, two months later, I am producing again. And all data is available to me. And we are finding strange things that they are not matching at all. 
we are finding that two types that consumables power consumption chemical they are entirely different that means we are setting every time a benchmark now the question arises why that time was different why this time is a uh, earlier used to be okay at an average product this is costing me now each individual product produced each piece of the product produced tells me what it is costing me and that is making the people more conscious that because last time i produced this thing at 30 rupees 25 paisa why this time 30 rupees uh, 30 paisa so that kind of uh, focus is coming which will be making the companies more cost efficient and more uh, product oriented uh, on the same kind of uh, we can say that uh, it will be more consistent product more consistent quality and consistent cost product will so i will be do my plannings in a better way correct not only correct. to me then i am on the other hand i am now entering into another era where my customer can see me what i am doing so i have done a concept here uh, sharing my warehouse with my customer though it's a just a nascent stage in an uh, only infancy stage what we did we have made the stock lots and all other thing whenever it is getting updated and we have given a screen share to the customer so they know that where is this product and across the value chain he has ordered something so through the barcode we have already we share with him in the beginning so my my product is here 3 days away from here four days away from dispatch two days away from dispatch so they are basically virtually on my shop floor so they know better they can their their planning is also better so the losses which were happening of non availability of the raw material to the to my customer has gone and i was having certain surplus material that that also gone and we are giving them slots you want to book this slot this is a vacant slot there is no production available in that slot they can they jump themselves uh, book that slot okay we want this slot for our such and such product which will come five days so basically my material planning shifted from me to my customer who is the ultimate user of that so that that that's another change i am finding so similarly now we are planning this will go to the transporter also so that he can put the vehicle uh, when the material is ready i need not to call for a vehicle he can plan looking into that next 10 days this kind of vehicle requirement is going to come and this is the destination so all these things will be seen so we are into this process so i feel that man will be only pressing the buttons in 2030 30 that also from home i think all will be done automatically <laughs> ultimately yeah so you have really kind of summarized how technology is going to kind of shape up the future especially looking up at uh, the systems are learning every day based on whatever processes and production that uh, is in play and helping you to kind of come up with solutions that are much more cost effective all of these of course uh, lead to what we call uh, as personalization in terms of products uh, and material and two is uh, the ability to kind of self heal right if you know that hey we need to put this particular lubrication oil within the particular plant so the machine is able to look that and self heal itself so that uh, it minimizes uh, your uh, other operational uh, expenditure uh, that said I, i don't know if uh, you any of you recently in india went to bata showroom over the last few months but you might have seen a board there which says that our, our shop is under temporary renovation and this was in november and december so basically what they were trying to do is uh, to integrate a complete iot based solution so now if you go to a but a shop to buy a shoe you will see that there are some uh, displays that asks us about the type of experience that we have had within the shop so you press a happy not happy or whatever it is but what happens with those sensors and cameras is that they capture our emotions as well right and they figure out what is the type of product that we are buying and as soon as you do the billing they will ask you for your phone number so they will study the pattern of a particular person doing a particular shopping within that particular brand they get the demographics of uh, the person and eventually they say that maybe in 6 months or 8 months time there's going to be a chance of repeat buying of a particular product because this person like blue color and that's going to inform the nearest plant that to start manufacturing 8 months down the line a typical type of shoe that might sell in this particular territory so this is the type of radical automation that companies are thinking and we are seeing live examples of uh, many of those happening in front of us some of us will not even realize that so much of data is being gathered but that's the type of data that's uh, getting gathered uh, around the world and i have so many case studies uh, of uh, leading retailers 
that are all doing these kinds of uh, analytics, including if you go to a Starbucks uh, coffee shop, uh, they kind of study the pattern. And the next time when you go, they know exactly the type of preference you have on the coffee that you would like to get and what to add on uh, associated with it. So that's the level of engagement that digitization is actually offering. So let me just uh, bring Mr. Devarajan in. Uh, so a couple of things, uh, you already explained about how you're leveraging uh, technologies, both AR, VR, empowering your employees to learn more, getting lots of ideas from uh, those uh, employees. Uh, but just to kind of put a twist to that, what are the key challenges that you face uh, within your uh, team uh, to kind of shape them up to the workforce of the future. Okay, I think uh, uh, I think a lot of good discussions are happening. At the same time, what's happening from we as a customer is changing. When we go and buy the vehicle, uh, we are able to ask for different things from the vehicle, uh, communication skills from the vehicle. If, for example, I, we can order Apache for different uh, height position, different uh, color situation, different um, communication patterns, and uh, it can uh, the, uh, GPS, everything is available in our way to today. And you can change the requirement of the product. Volume is increasing, I mentioned in the beginning. At the same time, variety is increasing. What's happening for all the shop flow people? Shop flow people, their children are getting educated in a lot of digital areas. Their view sets are changing. So what's happening is there is a requirement from the customer. There's a change in the family situation of the operator also. So co combining these two, there's a need for the operator himself to say, I want to learn new. I want to get into the areas of new areas. But there are challenges. Like what you mentioned in an earlier case, uh, will the activity will be lost? Will I lose my job? Will I will not be able to take care of the new things happening? So what we are trying to do is, um, in many of the blue collar job and, uh, and, uh, and white collar job, we are trying to have reverse mentoring. We have both experienced people and youngsters in the same thing. So we are able to get a lot of new ideas, challenges which the customer as a new person is faced. So he is able to bring in the new areas and able to train our uh, 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 experienced people also into it. So almost like a reverse uh, uh, mentoring is happening in our case. When we see the product selling well, because of the variety, there's a demand for agility in the factory. So to deliver the shop floor, the, the requirement of the customer, the shop floor has to change. So we are giving them the overall picture of what's happening in the industry, what's happening in the situation the customer is buying. That makes him change himself. So the challenge of itself. So this is both for the blue blue collar uh, operators as well as for the white collar area. We're trying to combine uh, uh, these two areas. So what we're trying to do is to fund the involvement, empowerment in which they're trying to do, but definitely challenges are there because the facility has not, we have to create the facilities. So we are trying to bring in combination of processes, combination of the customer requirement and a combination of changes happening in the environment. See, the customer in two-wheeler is demanding what is there in the four-wheeler. And with uh, electrical vehicle coming into picture, there is a saying that, okay, uh, IC engines will not be there at all. What will be my activity? So this type of things are happening that they would like to make the change. So to, to, to complete this, we are trying to have automation in our areas in terms of EV vehicles, in terms of the, the uh, training of them into different areas. One thing I found is, uh, I agree with the, the earlier speaker saying that it will be a button based, but the, the skill sets of the people is changing. The programming skill sets, the understanding skill sets, analysis of the data given from the machine, how to take a decision on the, on the, on the varieties of the decision, uh, data coming from the machine. What are, are we analyzing the data at all? Are we using AR, AR or techniques to ensure, ensure that the continuity is there? These are the new areas, the challenges are coming in. Second challenge is what's happening is uh, many of the data is in the cloud. So uh, uh, whether it will be lost, what is attack? What is cyber attack coming into picture? How to get the data center in a backup in an area? So how, uh, how to have a critical areas resilient? Uh, COVID was one disaster. Any other disaster coming in, how to ensure that we are able to have an SMEA to create the resilience? And how to create more redundancy 
in our maintaining surplus capacity or uh, ensure that it is and how to ensure that the recovery times how what are the objectives coming in so we are trying to bring in benchmarking in different areas in uk usa japan what's happening in that industry and how to bring it to india faster and how to ensure that we are we are protective data protection personal protection and future protection second thing which are trying to have is to uh, connect with the family members of the operators because many of the customer are the operator's family itself for a two wheeler so that type of pressure is coming on to him to ensure that he is in a factory where he can contribute more so the challenges are plenty but challenges are taken as an opportunity we are trying to involve him into the the environment which are working environment from the customer angle environment from the family which he is working on and how to ensure that there is a pull from him that training is required Uh, uh and then data uh, especially on the resilience data redundancy recovery and all these things we are trying to make into a system and one thing in tvs is we are trying to standardize many of these activities we are trying to put manual we are trying to have lot of training lot of communication probably excess communication we are trying to tell him what is the purpose we are trying to do what change can happen in the environment which you are working because now everybody is talking about ev vehicle we are in the ice engine how we are able to take care of the changes happening in the environment which are going on so back to our uh, areas are communication involvement of people ensure they are empowered to take this thing and at the same time there is a threat there is no doubt about it are we communicating it properly are we making involved in this activity and there is a pull for training so if there is a pull for training i think we will win so it's not a push for training it's not a push saying that oh we may not be in the business at all but there is a pressure there is a threat how we can work together to overcome the threat with digital methodology taking the digital areas and transparency in what's happening so this is the method we are adopting here absolutely thanks a lot uh, dr devraj uh, so there is uh, a lot of inputs in terms of what you said in the trying to communicate and ensure that you are able to kind of provide the type of service that you want and also to have a combination of approach for both the blue collar as well as the white collar job now in terms of a very important point related to data being always available on the cloud and what's the security associated with it yes there are mitigating kind of technologies that are available at the moment so that's the reason you see edge computing yeah yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. being a, a big area of focus yeah. now to ensure that uh, the threats related to cyber attacks are minimized Yeah. so that it doesn't kind of happen in the premises but uh, so edge computing is likely to be a solution so so thanks a lot uh, for that we are uh, mindful we have only about 10 minutes so request all the panelists to kind of give their thoughtful opinions quickly please uh, next one is uh, for mr vikas thapa who touched a lot on the human element uh, uh, earlier Uh, about employees looking up at how their productivity is managing workforce across different locations in a large uh, uh, workforce of almost about 15000 how do the human resources and operations uh, function come together to architect work workforce and workplace in this uh, digital industry or industry 4.0 that we are talking about thank you okay uh, let me start with three points okay real time information is very important critical okay my plant manager driving to work at 8 o'clock shift had started 6 am is able to see what is his production planning and how you uh, people manning status critical red yellow green okay i'm just giving you one example okay real real time information is very important second i think so happy employee will only lead to happy customers i'm bringing it to this because and the third is scheduling people or handling people is both art and science so if i combine these three things many a time we talk about production planning and employee scheduling we always think about what business needs we never think about what employee needs i think so employee scheduling if you we talk about the concept of smart factory really we have to think about smart planning and smart human capital uh, scheduling so thinking about what is the need of the business what is the need of the individual and what is the need of the customer i think the three things if you are really connect well and convert into human scheduling that is going to be a win win solution okay uh, that is my view are we smart enough and are we 
do we have that EQ in your employee scheduling where we take care of employees? Okay, that is very important. If I got 5% Muslims in my workforce, am I smart enough to really take care as part of my production planning and really come out with something? Or do I have a smart system to really pick up that and reminds me or reminds the plant manager? Okay, so these were a few of the concepts I'm talking because the role of HR is changing in the years to come. In next five years, okay, HR will be more moving as a catalyst, as a change agent, and as a more of a consultants. And their role will be enabling the line managers and the plant managers to handle people well. So the utilization of this technology is very important in the complete value chain of HR, okay? Right from onboarding, training. Just imagine, okay, if I'm able to just push out one training module to my blue collar people in their smartphones, everybody has. And while sitting in the bus, they are able to complete 30 minutes of module. That's, that's the way uh, uh, we are thinking about. It's not only what the organization needs, what the employee needs, and what, what the uh, generally, okay, if you are trying to cover up all this into this thing, that, that, that is, Mr. Anand, I'll call it more of a smart factory. It's not only... Absolutely. No, that's what that's most of the IT guys are doing. Yeah. <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the phone, asking all of our employees to have the onboarding even before they joined by looking up at videos and other things related to it. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. See, uh, let me share a small story. It's around 25 years back, okay? I was attending a seminar of uh, uh, management, uh, so it was Indian IMA. And that time they were talking about the concept of digital marketing. And I think so Indian customers, they are talking about behavior of Indian customers. They will say, if they have to buy an apple, first they will touch the apple. First they will try to see the color, red, green, what? And the fifth, they will pick up and try to smell it also. <laughs> Correct. Okay. And if these three tests pass on, then the person will purchase the apple, okay? So the simple uses of technology recently, okay, I, 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 I was very nervous when I recruited a CEO of a business through digital or on the virtual setup offered, onboarded, okay, on that. So today, if I relate, I think so. I couldn't touch him, okay, but I could see him. Even I couldn't smell him, okay, which, which perfume he was putting on, okay. So that's the way it is changing. So we'll have to be smart enough, we have to be attacked. But what I'm saying, there will be always an element of human side, which we'll have to do a very fine balancing. That's a bad thing. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Uh, so I, I just wanted to kind of bring uh, Sumit into the picture to check about uh, you do a lot of work on scheduling and other things and make them factory ready. Sumit, your uh, views on it. Sure, Anand. And uh, I, I think some wonderful thoughts from all the on the all the panelists. And one thing that comes out very clearly from everyone is uh, how important it is to drive employee experience and, and more so the blue collar employee experience who are on the floor. And, and I think if I were to take this conversation a little ahead from what Mr. Vikas Thapa mentioned around scheduling, uh, very nicely you mentioned that scheduling is both a bit of an art and science. And I think where we tend to help a lot of our customers is try to bring the little, uh, try to convert a little bit of that art a little more to science from the perspective that, uh, as, as, as rightly mentioned by Mr. Thapa, scheduling traditionally has been about the business needs. So there is so much of a production plan I need and against the production plan, this is the skill I need and hence who are the people I need to bring in. But there are a lot of other variables that you need to look into that mathematical equation of scheduling. One, one is the business needs in terms of production. Second is you need to look at employee variables, right? Who's available, who's not available. Can you, for example, and this is, this is where the digital world is moving towards. Can you, for example, as I think Mr. Malhotra in a, in a way gave that example, but can you, for example, create shifts post it out to a digital board like a mobile and can employees on the basis of their availability and their skills go ahead and pick up shifts. It is creating a completely different experience for employees saying where they've been empowered to be able to go ahead and uh, choose something in advance, even before they come to office. They're sitting at home, selecting a shift on the mobile and that goes out. So digital technology uh, interventions can allow you to do that. You're connecting your business needs you're connecting your people needs. And actually there is a third lever I'd like to bring in when it comes to scheduling, which all of you do it subconsciously every day is a compliance angle. 
you also need to be proactively compliant when you're scheduling people, right? You cannot be scheduling a person for 15 night shifts in a go. You cannot be scheduling a person for 24 hours in a go. All of these have fatigue effects, but all of these also have direct compliance effects. So when you're doing scheduling of employees on the shop floor and all of you are doing it day in, uh, day in, your teams rather are doing it day in, day out, some of these parameters are actually kept in the back of the mind where, where the art piece comes in. But I think where digital intervention can help you is bring all of this to the forefront, all of these multiple variables to the forefront and still give you the most optimal schedules uh, and yet driving better employee experience. That's an area that we uh, we tend to do a lot of work with uh, many organizations. So so thanks, Anand, for bringing me in a subject very close to my heart. And I think uh, Mr. Vikas Thapa addressed it uh, wonderfully well in terms of the, his thoughts as well. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. We just have uh, a, a couple of minutes before we have to actually conclude today's uh, session, but uh, it's been such a vibrant uh, kind of discussion. So last, of course, Mr. Debashish, uh, uh, could you please highlight uh, a few measures uh, that you think will bring very positive outcomes to ensure employee well-being. Yeah, when you talk of uh, well-being, I think uh, uh, we should cover physical health, emotional health, financial health, social health. So all this makes uh, a total well-being. And in manufacturing sector, um, um, if you see the, gen the generation that is coming in, the age group of 30s, they are more tech savvy, they are more uh, accustomed when you are coming to the shop floor. Well, there is a band of people who are in the 45 to 55 and they are slowly becoming uh, um, uh, something who is a little uh, getting aged in terms. So there is a, in the mind, there is a fear that uh, we are getting technologically updated, we might get replaced. And that fear is in the shop floor in terms of their exchanges. And when they go back to a house, they have a fear that I'm getting old. I have still an EMI left with me. How do I do if the company replaces me? And at the same time, the young generation who are there, who are full of energy, full of many things, when they come, they very quickly tend to get um, uh, into a state of monotony. That, oh, it's the same work. Um, uh, I have to press the button. So we have to provide some smarter machines to them. Um, and at the same time, we need both of them together so that we can make this digital progress and the productivity high and all these goals achieved. So in this coming years, with the help of HR, we need, we'll be requiring more customization in terms of approaching the age groups. We require both of them. Well, the gentleman who is in the certain age group, maybe 45 plus bracket, who needs to be counseled more on the physical part, and how to tackle the rest of his EMIs? How do I help him in your you know, daughter's marriage? How do I physically, how do I guide you in your finance for the next of the year? And maybe create a job opportunity when you are not there with us. I'll for the younger mind, we take them, how do you take their inputs on uh, what is your passion? Uh, do you like music? So I create a music club for you. You like painting? So I engage you for the summer camps as my trainer. So until and unless we create customized uh, programs for them in terms of their making them happy, the mingling will not happen and will not progress. So, and then only we'll become a total socially well-being and there will be less attrition, people will be happy and we'll get more production, more productivity. That's my point. Thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Debashis. I think uh, we are just past the hour at the moment, but uh, it was indeed uh, a very engaging and engrossing session on leveraging technology to empower workforce management. As you all know, of course, uh, uh, within Frost & Sullivan, we do a number of manufacturing audits. We have done a lot of audits to many of your uh, factories. So we continue to do that uh, after a lull because of COVID last year. But uh, I'd like to be in touch uh, with, uh, with all of you. And uh, if there is a way through LinkedIn or other mediums, I'll surely get in touch with you. But uh, overall, I think, uh, there's a lot of insight uh, that we heard uh, from very, very uh, established uh, thought leaders like you to learn about uh, the different processes that is uh, actually shaping up uh, a future ready workforce within your own organization, as well as all of you coming up with novel solutions to beat any kind uh, of challenges. So I think COVID has actually definitely exposed us to learn a number of new things and that we were able to quickly implement because otherwise getting the requisite approvals to implement anything new is, is a long drawn process that we all know of. But uh, I'm glad that we had to have an external force, although unsettling and in many cases resulting in many 
a calamities, but nevertheless, uh, it definitely ensured that we learn the art of uh, leveraging technologies as well as harnessing all the things that we have in quick time and have that implemented. So with that, uh, I would like to end uh, today's session, but we'll be in touch and uh, we'll ensure that uh, there is more time given for such conversations in the future. So until then, have a good rest of the week and a happy, uh, another happy end to this uh, first month in the new financial year. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And, uh, thank you all. Thank, thank you, you all. all. And uh, thank you on behalf of uh, Manufacturing Today and UKG. Uh, I just have one question to you all because I kind of heard uh, everyone. Um, are we overestimating the power of technology? I heard um, Mr. Malhotra saying about, you know, uh, tomorrow's factories will be just about uh, pressing buttons. Are we overestimating the whole scenario? It's a layman's question, not coming from a manufacturing person. I don't think so, personally. We are not overestimating. To me, we need to, the thing is changing. I be, uh, Man is becoming smart and machines are becoming intelligent. That's what I like to say. So you still need okay. men to smartly work on this technology. That, that goes without saying that men has to work smartly, not hard work. That hard work concept is going on, so gradually going away. Now productivity means smart working. So how he can handle smartly the job, not how he will do hard work. The hard work concept is gradually going away from us. That's what I like to say. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Oh, yeah. According to me, Sujata, what I feel is that uh, technology is really going to help you out. But you cannot say the basics are going to go away. The basics will always remain there. Basics will always be remain there, but technology is going to help us to move ahead. Whatever we do it, because I'm a very, very practical man, I'm telling you, whatever qualification one does, he has to go through ABCD. So the basic of ABCD of all the processes, the, the industry, that will remain the same. But yes, that is going to help digitization, and the data are going to help us. How can we reduce the variations? How can we improve the processes? If we are able to reduce the variation in the at the input side, then obviously your output is going to be much better than what we have as on today. And we will have a very real time data. We can monitor it. We can take a data as on today. We are collecting data. And sometimes we feel lots of data giving lots of confusion and creating more confusion. But then that is going to help us out to segregate those data and give a conclusion what we should move for. And once we get the conclusion, then the path will be maybe we can uh, reinforce with our experience whether the path what we are taking it is right or wrong. It is not that the path what Data will say that would be perfectly, no, our knowledge, our experience will always be there. This is what I feel. And we really need to be smart. Yes, the government of India is talking about smart city and people are having smart mobiles. So why not smart manufacturing? So we need to look at that. All these things are enablers. So how we take off the enablers are important. So digitization is an enabler. How to make it transparent? How to take a decision based on data? So it is all the new tools are coming every time. Are we using it effectively? And how are we empowering our people? But main thing is what is that you should not forget our basics at all. Basics has to be stronger in what we are trying to do and how to help to take the decision better. Second thing is the agility has to improve. The demand from the customer is changing. The customer is changing. He's, he will pull us to take different areas. Are we ready to do? Digital will help us to get the data faster, transparently to take a decision. It's only an enabler, according to me. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank you for a wonderful discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Sumit. Thank, so Thank, Thank you. Uh, Thank you for uh, offering us a platform to put down all these points. Thank you, everyone.